Hey FossTube, it's Katie the Stash Queen coming to you on this Sunday, March 20th. Happy spring! Yay! If you're in, the, I guess, if you're in the northern hemisphere, near the southern hemisphere, I guess, happy autumn? Yes? Yeah? So, I'm happy to be getting into spring, even though it was really cold yesterday when we were out at my son's soccer game. I hope everyone has had a great Stitchy week. Stitchy-wise, my week was great. Otherwise, my week was just kind of crazy. Um... I think I may be coming down with something. This is my, I don't feel so great, but I'm going to do a video look. <laughs> so, you know, here's hoping this upcoming week is a better one. I've got some good plans for this week. I'm supposed to be meeting up with Kate, the Queen of Starts, for a Stitching Sister Day. Yay! Um, and, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. And just, you know, it's a short week for school this week because of Friday. The kids are off from school for the Easter weekend. We'll see how everything goes. So let's go ahead and get started. I will start today first, as I always do with my Q&A. Uh, and I, I have to say, I was getting ready for this video today. And I thought at first, you know, I don't think I really had a whole lot of questions this week because I didn't really remember a lot of the questions that I'd seen come across through email. There's a bunch. That's okay. I love it. But it's one of those, oh, there's a question. Oh, there's a question. Oh, I forgot that question. <laughs> oh, well. I blame it on the week. Let me just say, redheaded tempers are not a stereotype. They're real. They're very, very real. All right. Uh, Melissa Olds asked, what are the top five cross-stitching tools you can't live without? Ooh, good question. Um, I'll say my hoop because I do everything in my hoop. Um, I'll say needle minders because I have a needle minder on every project and you guys are well aware of my needle minder obsession. Um, I will say, I'm not going to say needles because you have to, needles and floss you ha and fabric you have to have to do the project in, uh, to begin with. Um, I'll say my tacky bob for when I bead essential must have tacky bob. Um, I will say my, uh, da -da -da, I should have thought about this before I did this video. Uh, my bead storage system, um, I have the Dury storage system and I've talked about it before. Um, it's awesome. I keep adding more beads for more projects and it's just awesome. I have to have that for organizational purposes. And then I'll say a pencil with a good eraser because I don't highlight my patterns. I use a pencil and to mark off what I've done. And that's because, and I did it even yesterday, if I mark something off accidentally, I can go back and erase it. So I'd say those would be my five essential tools. Nothing too fancy, but that's it. Uh, squeaky 50, or squeaky 35, sorry, asked, what do I do with my finished pieces? Do I frame them or just store them away? Um, I've talked about this before. I have a box right now with all of my pieces that need to be made into FFOs. I've put some in frames. I've made some into various objects that they're supposed to be. It just kind of depends on the piece. And just so I look here to talk to you guys, but I look over here to answer my questions because it's all on my little screen. Uh, Madison Kearns asked, uh, that she, she said that she has an Instagram account dedicated to her stitching, but she doesn't post anything on Facebook about it. Can she still join Mania? Absolutely. Um, as I've mentioned before, everyone is welcome to join Stitch Mania who wants to join Stitch Mania. Garrett and I do check profiles, though, to see if there is anything remotely stitchy related, whether it is a like, whether it is a picture in the profile, whether it is a group that you're in. If you don't have any of that, um, send Garrett or I a message um, and forgive us if it takes us a couple days, if it goes into our filtered request messages, but send us a message letting us know you are a real person that you do want to join in, um, and we can get you at it. No problem. Um, Kateri95 said that she, ref that I referenced magazines, both old and new for many of my projects for the year of starts. Um, she asked if, if for the older ones, did I have a subscription or did I hunt eBay or forums for them? I've had subscriptions. A lot of these are magazines that I have collected over the years. If I didn't have subscriptions, they were purchased at like a Barnes and Noble or something when they were current. Um, there's only one or two times that I have gone back to search for magazines. And that is because like the one time I did the year of uh, celebrations that I'm doing that has the 12 different motifs, I had five of the six parts of it. So I had to search to find the sixth. Hello. Why is the hour? It's not yet. You still have quite a bit. It's only 12. You want to come and say hi for a second though? Come here. You can come say hi. 
Say hi, everybody. Oh, no, don't don't be shy. If you're going to be here, you got to say hi. Can you say hi? Can you give some crazy eyes? Why not? No, you need the better crazy eyes. And I, it will make Tracy's day if you do the crazy eyes because Tracy loves your crazy eyes. Okay, on the count of three, we'll both do it, okay? One, two, three. Oh, come on, silly boy. So, you want to sit here while I answer some questions? Okay, can you close the door first? Because otherwise I can hear the noise downstairs. Oh, bye. Guess he wasn't gonna stay after all. Uh, so yeah, I, I've only searched for it once and I think I found it like on Hirschner's or something like that because it wasn't too outdated of an issue. Um, the only other ones that I've looked on for like eBay or that sort of thing have been the Halloween and um, ornament issues from just cross stitch that I may be missing. I have quite a bit of the Christmas issues. I'm missing some of the Halloween issues, but you know, I collect those as I can. It's not a huge rush for me, but it, most of these are things I've been stitching for 20 some odd years. A lot of these I have been, have moved with me more than once. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, Sillahog uh, indicated that she would like to see more of the Cross Stitch Gold Collection May June 2016 issue. Um, it is currently inaccessible at the moment. I will make a note next week or in a video this week, one of the two. I'm typing this in as we talk. Um, do a. I'll either try to get a video done this week of it, um, or uh, if I don't get it done this week with other stuff, I will do, I will review it at next week's video for sure. Sorry, I just, it's, I'm in the process of clearing out this room and it's in a place that I can't get to right now. And I forgot to grab it before this. Shirley and Peterson asked me two questions. First, she said, how many needle miters do I anticipate needing for my year of starts? Well, I use a needle minder on every single piece. Um, except my perforated paper pieces because the paper just bends and it doesn't work well on the perforated paper pieces. But I think I'm going to need over 300. And a lot of them have already started. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I'm going to need a lot of them. Um, and then once my projects are finished, do I have any plans for all these needle miters? Well, I, I have them all displayed on this board and I have a second board. These boards are going to be hung up on my wall and they'll just be artistic display pieces to use. Um, I will put needle miners back on when they're being, when they're done being used, I'll take them back off when I want to use them again. They'll just be artistic decorative pieces. Uh, let's see. Courtney ECR said that I mentioned a tension tutorial that I did. Can I point her to that? I tried to go back and find it. Um, because I didn't put it in the title. I think it was one of those things that I started talking about and then I just kind of ended up doing. I will look more this week um, to see if I can find which video it was in um, so I can mention that next week. But if anyone who watches my videos and remembers which video that was in, feel free to let us all know because I don't remember. Um, Chris Cross Stitcher said, can we please have an Outlander, uh, Outlander stitch along next month in Mania? Pretty please. I'll see what I can do. I think that can probably be arranged. Um, Shanna Colton uh, said that, she, will I be showing everyone happy everything when it's an FFO? Absolutely. Um, and then a magazine question, she said that she's subscribed to the world of cross-stitching and see they're mostly pattern-based versus articles. What are the two main focuses of your magazines, just cross-stitch and cross-stitch and, and needlework? Um, they're both primarily pattern and that's why I like them and they're patterns that I like. I. Quite honestly, I rarely read the articles in most of the issues of any of the magazines. I get them for the patterns, so. Uh, Karen R. said, a couple of videos ago, you showed some thread called Muddy Monet. It's gorgeous, and I'd like to buy some. Can you please tell me where you got it from? This is the Muddy Monet collection from Valdani. I got this from Stitchy Box, and I will post a link below to Stitchy Box from their shop. I don't know if they have any more left. Um, but it is called, it's Valdani Muddy Monet for J. Patton Designer Collection. See that? So if it's not on Stitchy Box anymore, because I don't know how many they had in stock, um, search for that and see if you can find it. Good luck. 
Uh, is, do I have a favorite needle? Novice Stitcher asked, do I have a favorite needle? And if so, what is it? Were the different brands of needles and have you tried any of them? I've mentioned this before. And I scandalized Liz from Dragonfly Lotus and Stitchy Box when I said, I just use what comes in the kits. And she even sent me some bow and needles and different sizes and very sweet of her. And I've used them. Here's the thing. I have stitched for so long that when I started stitching, I didn't realize, ooh, you use different needles for different size holes in the fabric. And the needles I use, I couldn't tell you the brand. Um, I like them about this length. Don't know if that's petites or regulars. I like them thinner not bead needle thin, but not really thick either. And I like them with the larger holes. And most of those that I have, I got from kits and they haven't tarnished, they haven't broken. They work just fine for me with everything that I do. I like the larger eyes rather than the smaller eyes because it makes threading easier. Um, if it's too thick in my fingers, it just doesn't feel right for stitching. Same with if it's too thin. Needles are a necessity. Needles are not where I choose to spend my money, if that makes sense. I have what I have and they work just fine. If I, some for some reason, run out of needles at some point, I'll go and figure out what I want to get. But find something you like and go for it. And I've used some of the same needles for years, just so that's out there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Christy Pounder asked, when I use a, when I'm doing a piece on perforated paper, do I use the 14 count 9 by 12? Yes, I do. This is one of the, sorry, it's silver, so it's reflecting, but it's the Nail Hill 14 count, yeah, 9 by 12 two sheets when I order it myself. Yeah, that's what I use. Uh, let's see. Uh, EF Bauer said, when will you be backing that angel ornament you're stitching on silver perforated paper? If so, how will you do it? Yes, and I don't know. Um, I have a couple of the other ornaments in that series that I have planned to start later this year. Um, also, they're going to be on perforated paper. So I don't know if I'm going to back them with... It'll either be backed with a scrapbook paper or a fabric because um, they'll be flat ornaments. I just haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. If I'm going to do a different one for each ornament, if I'm going to do the same for each ornament. I'm not at that stage yet. But yes, they will be backed. Uh, and Joan Perkins said, do you have a process for picking your hand dyed fabrics for a pattern or the other way around? I've talked about this a few times, but for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I rare, uh, I buy patterns that I like when I like them. I buy, I'm a member of a couple fabric of the month clubs and I otherwise buy fabric when there is a sale or there's something, a, a compelling reason for me to buy fabric. I rarely, rarely, rarely buy a pattern and fabric at the same time, like intending them for each other. It just doesn't happen. Um, I, ra I much prefer, and it works much better for me to have the patterns that I want to do and the fabrics that I have and to go through and see what calls out to me. Because some of the combinations of fabric and pattern that I have used over the years I wouldn't have picked if I had said, okay, well, here's this pattern. Let me figure out, you know, the fabric and buy it all at the same time. I would have, and I'm sure what I would have picked would have been lovely, but it, I love the combinations of things that I had picked out. Um, so when I am ready to kit up a project, I sit down with the pattern and then I pull out my big box of fabrics and I start going through. And it's just a... a you know, I figure out what size of fabric do I need because I have different cuts of sizes of fabric. So if it's too small, then it definitely isn't an option. Um, that's easy enough. Uh, then I figure out, okay, well, will this pattern work on this fabric? No, the colors clash. No, these colors will, will disappear too much. No, I just don't like the way this one looks. No, I think this one would be a better themed for something else. Yes, this one would be an option. Let's put it to the side. And then when I've gone through all my fabrics and I have all of my options, I sit down and say, okay, which one do I like the best? And they go together. That's pretty much it. I sometimes use the viewer um, to play with if, I ha if I'm like torn between several of them and I just can't decide because I love them all and I think that I'll be great. I'll look them up in the viewer um, to kind of see, okay, which one does it look the best on the viewer? And that usually is my, my tiebreaker. 
And those are my Q&As for the week. Thanks everyone as always for your questions and feel free and those couple that I have to follow up on, I will do my best to follow up on with next week. Otherwise, you know, if you have another question for me that I haven't answered, feel free to put in the comments below. Week in review. Uh, like I said, good week stitchy wise, even if the rest of everything else was crazy, hectic, insane. Um, I have two mini finishes this week uh, from my annual stitch alongs that I'm working on. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, first off, the first mini finish that I have for this week, I finished the March block of my Magical Creatures calendar by Clouds Factory. So there's the Phoenix in all its glory. And this is done on 32 Opal Belfast in Diva from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie using flosses and silk from Moe's Sale. And here is the entire piece as it stands now. Yay! And I've got my little needle minder from Minding My Minders who is changing ownership. So there we go. So this is going to get put away until April. Um... It could, it would have come up this week in my alphabetic rotation. Um, and if I hadn't already finished it this week, I would have just made that a focus piece for that day, but it's done. So I'm skipping it and I will put this up again in April. Um, the next one actually isn't the, the other mini finish. This is the other clouds factory. Cause I do the two clouds factory ones. It's the postcards, um, from the world for clouds factory. Here is where I am on London at this point. I should finish London this week. I just ran out of time. So there's London. And here is the whole piece. This is being done on 32 Joblin and Ice Goddess from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie using flosses and silks from Moe's Sale. And I've got my wooden needle binder from Delicious Threads. And I think I have decided what I'm going to do for all of the fussy bits in the middle. I think I'm going to use Krynik and give it a little bling. So I'll continue working on this piece this week. So my other little mini finish, I finished the Netherlands portion in my pumpkin passport. Let's pull it out. And this one is done on 28 Jobelin and I Scottis from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Here we go. So here's Netherlands. I ended up adding the flag up here and Bad Wolf Graffiti and here is the whole portion right now, all three of those months, all done. And here's the whole piece so far, my Hoovy and I's Pumpkin Passport. Now this is gonna stay out for the rest of the month because I really wanna get more of the border done, four scarf done up there, and then of course the white border below the words too. Um, so I'm gonna keep this out and work on that the rest of this month, but I'm up to date on the monthly portions at least. And we'll see what happens, where we go in April, and what changes I may need to do. And of course, my pet, my needle minder is one of the limited edition pumpkin, the past, the needle minder from Frosted Pumpkin for this piece. Yay! So I'm sure if I get some more, pro I have a plan on how I'm going to do work more on the scarf and the border this week. Um, so if I stick to that plan, I'll show you guys how the border's looking next week. Uh, then my focus for a finished piece is an electronic pattern, and it is Box of Delights from Blackwork Journey that I'm doing on 32 Joblin in Chocolate Milk from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is where we are at this point. I have finished all of the borders and details for blocks one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to do work on blocks five and six to get all of the outline done so then I can start filling them in with my Jottery Designs threads. And I've got a Jamie Needle Minder from Minding My Minders, which yes is why I think I can arrange we get a Outlander stitch along. I'd have to find a piece though. I don't think I have an Outlander themed piece or a Scottish themed piece for that matter. I may have to rectify that. I just gotta look and see when the series starts. So we can figure all that out. My uh, annual mania stitch along this past week was a Chatelaine week, and I worked on my medieval town mandala. And this one is being done on 32 Lugana in Truffle from Picture This Plus. And here is now it's going to be kind of hard to see what I did this week, but I'll show. I'll do my best to show. 
Okay, so I finished the first round of the golden border around this center section. And then each of the little, I don't know if it's going to show, it's going to be blurry, but each of the little flower beds all got outlined in gold, in Petite Treasure Braid gold. I filled in a couple of sections where I had missed some cross stitches. And then in each of the corner beds, I've got a couple of Algerian, I've got an Algerian eyelet in each of the corner beds to start some of the detail specialty stitches in those flower beds. So it's not, it hasn't really grown in size, but there's more details completed. And then I got another Jamie needle minder. So this actually comes up again this week. So I may get some more of those uh, specialty stitches that I need to work on done in some of those flower beds. And then I'll move after I get some I, in the instructions. I'm, mine's a printout, so it doesn't say part one, part two, part three, the way the electronic patterns do. But I have it all kind of planned out to a certain point of how I'm going to organize everything. So uh, next, we monthly mania sell. Okay. So this month, it's not easy being green. And I showed you on last week's video, I was working for week one. I was working on um, Christmas Elegance, or actually week two, my bad, sorry. It was Christmas Elegance by Mirabilia. And here's where I finished her up at. I don't think I got a whole lot more progress than what I showed on Sunday, but that's okay. She is being done on 32 Belfast and Silent Night from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here's where she ended up. Got a lot more of this green done over here on the side of the dress. So she's coming along. And I got my little Russian doll needle minder from Delicious Threads. So she's going to go away for a while. Let's get this all folded back up. And then starting this past Tuesday, I started working on... Week three of this, which is my um, Dreaming of Tuscany from Dimensions Gold Collection Petites. And I made a lot of progress on this this week. Still in the hoop because I got I was working on it last night. But look, lots and lots of progress. I'm really happy about it. I got a lot of this stuff done down here, working on the wine bottle. Got some cheese part going on. I'm happy with it. And I've got my key needle miner from Gina's Unique Boutique. So I got two more days on this today and tomorrow to work on this. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna work on for the final week of this stitch along in a little bit. So year of starts. I was able to get all the year starts started this week. First one is an electronic pattern. I'll put a link to it below. It's Inigo Montoya from Pixel Power Design. And I'm doing this on a scrap fabric that Garrett gave me. You killed my... F <laughs> so, got some words going. And then there's my Princess Bride Needle Minder from Minding My Minders. That stitched up pretty quick, even though it says you killed my... F Then the next one, actually, A, B, C, D, that's one over there. Um, sorry, mental part for a second. The next one I worked on was from Joan Elliott's Bewitching Cross Stitch book. And it is the Celtic Wheel Cushion. And I'm doing this one on 28 Jobelin in Thornhaven from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. If you can hear my husband, I apologize. Here we go. And here's where we got to at this point. Just a little bit in. I got a Celtic Knot Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. This one's going to be an interesting one to stitch because there's so much detail and intricacies and color changes and all that sort of thing. Then the next one is another electronic pattern that I will put a link to below. It is uh, Beauty and the Beast by Dona Stitch. And I am doing this one on 32 Opal Lugana and Caribbean Tides from Under the Sea Fabrics. And really, it's kind of boring. It's lines. See, can you even see it? Yeah, there's lines. 
Nothing too detailed, but it got started. There's my Bell Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. It's a start. There's a lot of those lines of stairs and stuff on it. Then... That one goes up there. The next one was um, Look What I Did from the Just Cross Stitch September October 2013 issue. It's this little guy right here, my ghost with his quilt. Look what I did! My favorite name of all of my pieces of that I'm working on. And it's just being done on a 32 count natural linen. And here is where I got to on it. Got that jack-o'-lantern's face done without being filled in, but it's done. Got my little candy needle minder from Minding My Minders. So I'm going to keep working on that when it comes on, which is actually this week. It comes up again this week. Then, so I'll go over there with that. Um, next was Ukrainian Egg A, which is this one down here, which is from the Just Cross Stitch April 2015 issue. And I'm going to be doing all three, but I just started A this time. And I am doing them on 32 Jobelin in Sailor's Delight from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here's the quadrant. I This piece is easily divided up into four quadrants of fabric. So I'm just doing an egg in each quadrant. So here's where he started. Black. Lots of black. But that works. Oh, and I've got... Um, my needle minder is a... Star Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. Then the next one I start in. Was Miscellany in Red. It's from Just Cross Stitch February 2014. And it's being done on 28 count white Jobelin. And here. where I got to. And I really enjoyed working on this piece. I really like working on the black work pieces. Yes, you can see red through the fabric back here, but that's just a thread that I left hanging. So there we go. That's where we started. And we got this cool big red crown heart crown needle miter from Nifty Needle Nannies. Oh, don't go to sleep on me, computer. Then the last one for my year of starts this week was my, um, from Just Cross Stitches 2009 ornament issue. It is the Cross of Christmas, which is this one right down here. And it's by, um, Erica Michael Designs, I believe. No, My Big Toe Designs, excuse me. My Big Toe Designs did this one. And I'm doing it on a 32 count Opalugana Jewel scrap from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here is where I got to when I worked on it. Start working on the bottom part of the cross. It's stitching up really quick. And I got my little ornament needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. So those were all my starts. Yay! I am having fun with all my starts. Don't get me wrong. It's a blast. Whips. I was able to work on five whips this week, which I was very happy about. Um, first one was from the Dimensions Gold Collection. It's Italian Vista. And here's where I got to. I did more on the in the water on the bottom. So a lot more of that orangey color that's in the water on the bottom. Got that cameo needle minder from Minding My Minders. There's a lot of half stitches down at that bottom. Let me just tell you. Then the next one that I worked on um, was Jeweled Pear from Mill Hill. And I got more of the yellow done on the these parts done. I was trying to do more, but the day that I did it, I just had some other issues, so... But as I always say, progress is progress. 
Then the next one that I worked on my next whip was Kringle Wreath, also by Mill Hill. And I was able to finish all the white stitching part of his beard and hair up here and start working on the red of his outfit down here. And again, yes, trailing threads. If I know what's going to be there, it's not that big of a deal to trail the threads. In my opinion. It may be a lazy stitcher's tactic, but that's okay with me. Then... I worked on Let's Do Wine from Ursula Michael Designs. And I'm doing this one on 32 Lugana in Sorbet from Picture This Plus using silks from Mo's Sale. And here's where we are. I was able to finish all of the word, all of the lettering for the bow. And then I got barely started on the next line of words by the, middle, the label. Got a Sherlock and Irene needle minder from Minding My Minders. So, the bow being done, that made it a victory for me. And then the last whip I was able to work on this week was from Just Cross Stitches 2006 issue. And it is the Lights of Advent, which is this one right here. Um, do, this one's won by Erica Michael Designs. And I'm doing this one on uh, 32 Opal Lugana in Winter Solstice from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Here's where we got to. I finished the pink candle base and started some leaves down on, beneath it. And that Nativity Need No Minder is from Nifty Needle Manny's. So that was my week this past week. Overall a successful week. I was very happy with it. Got more whips worked on than I usually do, or usually have been, so that's a success. So, upcoming week, gotta scroll down on the screen. Hold on, give me one quick second. Okay, plans for the week. For the monthly stitch alongs, um, Magical Creatures calendar is being put away, because it's done until April. Um, I'm gonna work on the scarf and the border for Passport, show you guys where I got that this week, and I should be able to finish my postcards this week. So work on that. Um, Focus for a finish, gonna keep working on Box of Delights. I'll show you guys where I've got that next week. Um, for my annual Mania Stitch Along this week, it is a uh, Brooks Books Week for me. And I will be working on Banana and Child from the Just Cross Stitch 2010 ornament issue. And here's where she is at this point. So I've got that, lots of Krynik. So I'll be working on that this week. Then for the monthly Mania Stitch Along, it's not easy being green. Today and tomorrow I'm going to work on um, Dreamy of Tuscany from Dimensions. And then on Tuesday we'll start the final week of the Stitch Along. And I'm going to work on Robin Hood from Little House Needleworks. And I am doing this one on 32 Lugana in Sand from Picture This Plus. And here's where we are starting from this. And I won't start working on this until Tuesday. But here's where we are. And I've got a Captain America Needle Minder from, I believe that one's from Delicious Threads. So I'll start that on Tuesday. I'll show you guys on Sunday where we get to and then from there. Then this week I also have something new that I'm doing. I am a beta tester for the website Flossable, which is, um, from my understanding, essentially like Ravelry for knitters and crocheters. And so I don't do that, so I'm not very familiar with Ravelry. But from my impression, it is a similar concept, but it's for cross stitching and needlework. And I am a beta tester on there. And the beta testers are all starting a stitch along. And as you, as more beta testers get added, great. Um, it is a spring or autumn, depending on what hemisphere you live in, stitch along. It starts today, because today's the first day of spring or autumn, I guess. And it's gonna go until June 19th, which is the end of spring or autumn. I can't imagine autumn and June. That's just weird to me. 
Um, so I am going to, for this next few months, for this stitch along, I am going to be working on my Easter Fairy from Mirabilia. Either until I finish it or until the end of the stitch along, whichever comes first. And I am stitching her on 32 Jobelin in Seahorse Shores from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is where I got to when I worked on it for the year stars. Just a little bit of yellow. And I've got a Tinkerbell Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. So barely started, but I'm going to work on her. And I'll show you guys her progress each week until either I am done or this journal is done. Whichever comes first. And if you're in Flossible, the discussion about the stitch along is under the general discussions board on the forums. Um, so take a look and join in. Year of starts. All right, let's see what I've got in plan this week. First for today from the Just Cross Stitch 2011 ornament issue, I am going to be working on Celtic Christmas ornament number three from the Sunflower Seed. I've done another one of these in this series before. That needs to be put into a funnel leaf insurance, but it's this one right here. And I'm just going to be doing it on a 30 count sandstone tea dyed linen that I can see you through. Um, nothing super fancy. And I just got a little ornament needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. Pretty easy. Then tomorrow. I am scheduled to start working on Gypsy Queen by Mirabilia. I am excited about this one. She's gorgeous. I love her. And I will be doing her on 28 Jobelin and Pansies on Parade by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, which is this one right here. I think she's going to look beautiful on this. The pinks and the purples, then with the oranges popping on it, I think it's just going to be gorgeous. And I've got a crown needle miter from Gina's Unique Boutique that I'm going to use for this queen. Then the next one, I can't show you the pattern um, because it is, it's from World of Cross Stitching, issue number 211. Um, if you are familiar with World of Cross Stitching, they usually have in the center of the magazine each month, like a collection of they pick a theme and it's a collection of little motifs that you can use for like cards or mini projects or whatever. Um, and usually they just show the chart. They don't have a whole lot of them actually stitched up. And one of the ones I'm doing from that issue, it's called Fairies Welcome. It's words. It's a little square with words. It says Fairies Welcome. Um, and I am, but I can't show it to you because it's just the pattern. So you'll have to take my word on it or go look it up. It's cute. Um, and it, I'm just doing it on a scrap of fabric that Garrett gave me. I think this one is a scrap from Moe's and it is an Ada, but that's okay. And then here is a, um, little cameo needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. So I'll be doing it on that. Then the next start I have scheduled is from Just Cross Stitch's 2013 Halloween issue. And it is called The Little Stitching Witch. Don't want to show the pattern. Isn't she cute? I don't, like I've said before, I'm not a huge Halloween stitcher, but she is just adorable. I love her. And I am going to be doing her on 32 Lugana and Cherry Cordial from Silk Weavers. It's pretty. And then I have this cute little Blingy Witch Needle Minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. So that one's going to be fun. She's just so cute. Then the next one I'm doing is an electronic pattern that I will put a link to below. It's Don't Blink by Clouds Factory. I'm excited about this one. Um, I will be doing it on 32 Belfast in Silent Night from Die Stitch Love. It's a piece that Garrett gave me because Garrett's awesome. And I, my needle minder is, hello, a Weeping Angel needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies. Awesome needle minder. So I'll stitch on here. Um, the words I'm going to substitute out if you're familiar with this pattern, it's got a Weeping Angel, a TARDIS, and 10 at the top. And then it's his 
don't blink speech from the episode blink. Um, and the words all have different colors ready scheduled for them. I am going to substitute out for the words um, the different pieces, the different threads that I have from Jottery and Moe's that are Doctor Who themed. So from Jottery, it's just one that I have. It's called Dematerializing Tardis. So that's going to be worked in there somewhere. And then from Moe's, it's her companion line plus one that I pulled out that wasn't part of the companion line but fits. Okay, here is Martha Jones. Here is Clara Oswald. Here is Donna Noble. Here is Rose Tyler, which has got pink in it, which is not to be confused with Amy Pond, who also is orange and purple, but she has no pink in hers. And it's a little bit different tinge of orange and purple, but Rose has pink in hers. And then River Song. And then this last one in is sweetie for hello sweetie so i'll still be using some of the call for colors i'm just going to kind of play with it and figure out what words i want to use what colors i want to use for what words but i wanted to get the companion line in there for that piece then the next one i am starting is from the just cross stitch 2010 ornament issue and it's on the same page as madonna and child but it, it is called 1862 Snowflake, which is this one right here. It's all beads. It's all it is is beads. Um, it is from Forget Me Not in Stitches. So it's all beads. Yay! And I am doing it on 32 Opalugana Jewel from one of the Sea Fabrics, another scrap piece from my Doctor Who clock. And I've got this really blingy snowflake needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies that I'm going to use because why not? And I've got the beads, so I need to put them in their little boxes for storage when I'm done with it, but yay beading! Then my last one for the year of starts, I'll be starting my Prairie Schooler alphabet and I'll be working on the letter A, which is this one right here. A is for anchor. If I can get... <clears throat> My goal is to get this outline of the square done so I can help do it for positioning for when I do B and then C. So I may not get a whole lot more done than a black square, but if I get that done, I'm good. Um, and I am starting this on um, 32 Joblin in Toasted Almond from Steph. It's a custom, I'm not going to pull it all out, but it's a, it's a very nice, subtle, neutral that she custom cut for me. And then I'm using my Wonder Woman needle miner because this piece is going to be a Wonder Woman task. But I'm excited about it. So those are my starts scheduled for this upcoming week. Whips. I pulled out seven whips for seven days, again, as usual. Uh, first one is a holdover from this past week. It's the Little Mermaid from Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams Collection. And here is where we are starting from at this point. And I've got my pinup mermaid needle minder from, from Gina's Unique Boutique. Then, let's put this back in there. Then the next one is actually going to be Look What I Did. Because of the ABC order. Um, so that'll be my little ghost quilt ornament piece uh then the next one then the next day after that is actually madonna and child is scheduled to be which was a holdover i was originally going to work on it this week didn't get to it but it's also my piece for my bricks book stitch along this week so it'll be getting a little bit more love that day um then the next one is i can't show you the pattern on this one either because it only comes with the pattern but it is the march 2015 sampler motif club pattern from carolyn manning designs and i'm doing it on a 32 opalugana in ocean from silk weavers and i'm using caesar silk from mo's sale so here's where we are at this point i wish i could show you the pattern but i can't and i've got a little zelda needle minder from minding my minders i just love the colors on this the caesar silk is awesome 
silly me thought this could be the background for my needle minders. Ha! I'll figure something else out for it, but needle minder background it shall not be. I have too many now. Then the next one that I'm scheduled to work on for my whips. Ooh. Sorry. The floss didn't go all the way in. That's not good. Is Medieval Maiden from Joan Elliott. She's so pretty. There's a conversion of her out there that is stunning. That I will probably start after I finish this one. But she's a brunette instead of a redhead. And her dresses are like in wine burgundy colors. I will do that conversion after I'm done with the original. But I'm doing her on 32 Jobelin in Sailor's Delight from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And here is where we stand at this point. I've got a little Celtic knot needle minder. I believe I got that one from Gina's Unique Boutique. It's been a while. Then the piece that I'm scheduled to work on after that for my rotation is Medieval Town Mandala from Chatelaine. So that's just going to stay in my pile to work on. Um, hopefully get some more of those specialty stitches done in those flower beds and we'll see. And then the last one that I have scheduled to work on is from Dimensions. It's my Mediterranean flavors. This will probably be my next focus for a finished piece after I finish Box of Delights because look how close I am. I'm so close. And I've got a angel needle minder from Minding My Minders. So close. So those are my plans for the week. We'll see how far I get this week. Dash Quisitions. I only have a couple of things this week. Um, I ordered the March Pattern of the Month for the Pattern of the Month series from Stony Creek. And it's starting a, um, it's a one, two, three, four. It's going to go March, April, May, June, July through August. Um, it's this cute little uh, ho, ho, ho Christmas motif. And this is the first part. And then with that, to justify the shipping, I got another color infusions thread that I need for my Santa. And this is the 6330, the green. And then I also got the beads that I didn't realize I was missing from my Spirit of Cross Stitch Angel from Books Books. And this is um, 03050. I didn't know I didn't have them. And I need them to bead. So that's all I got this week. I've got more coming, I'm sure, between the monthly stuff that's all well, coming through. So, plans for the week. I'm having a, a stitchy day with Kate tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Um, I don't think we're going to go anywhere. I think, like, we're not going to go to any stitchy shops. We're just going to go and hang out at a restaurant and talk and chat and stitch and eat and have fun and all that. So, don't think there'll be a video, but there may be pictures. Uh, continue working on getting ready for April for the year of starts and do, hopefully, a preview video. Try to do a video of the magazine. Um, if not a video of the magazine this week, I will do it next. I'll do it as part of my video next Sunday. Um, oh, one cool thing I wanted to mention. I've mentioned this on Stitch Mania, but if you are not a member of Stitch Mania, I have heard through the grapevine that there is a movement that is coming along um, called Linen Underground. And what it is, from my understanding, is that some of our favorite designers are going to be designing for this group, um, but they're going to be using pseudonyms. So if Joan Elliott wanted to stick to to um, provide a pattern for it, she won't be using the name Joan Elliott. And the reason is because the these stitcher or these designers want to provide things for stitchers that they have always wanted to design, but may not but may not be part of their standard motif or their standard patterns or standard design aesthetic that they have done. So this way they can kind of do it, they can get the patterns out there that they really want to get out there, but you know, they are doing it under a pseudonym, which I think is awesome. It is it's gonna be so cool. Um so a little birdie told me of the webs or the Facebook page for it. So I'll put a link to that below. It's supposed to be launching, I think either in August or September. I can't remember off the top of my head, but go and join in on the page if you want to be some of the first to hear about this because I think it's going to be really awesome. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope everyone has a wonderful stitchy week and I will see you guys next time. Bye.